face masks are now required and actually mandatory in many public places and this is now a reality for the state that i live in so while i was making a mask anyway i figured i would let you guys see that process and some tips and tricks for actually cutting out your fabric from clothes you already own so this pattern I got online and I want to say thank you to the person on Instagram who sent it to me. I can't find your DM but thank you so much for sending this link and I will put it down in the description box below for anyone who wants to print it out. And if like me you actually have some fabric but it is not appropriate for actually breathing then what you can do is grab some of your old clothes. And if you are also like me, you probably already purged those weeks ago because you've been on top of this boredom thing. Like, So I had to sacrifice a pair of pajama pants. So if you are also using pants, I do actually recommend cutting off the bottoms like so because it's going to make the next steps easier. And if you are using 100% cotton as you should be, you should just be able to snip it at one little area and then rip it. So I have actually used this fabric because it has a stripe which is definitely going to make cutting out your pattern easier. On these pattern pieces, you will notice something called a grain. And as I briefly went over in my previous video, your fabric has a weft and a warp. Therefore, you need to make sure that you're actually aligning your pattern pieces on one of those two planes. So the easiest cheat is using a striped piece of fabric because you can clearly see whether you are on grain, but you could also follow the straight edge of your hem. Before you do that, of course, you do want to make sure that your fabric is very flat. So I recommend ironing before you cut anything, always. So now you can see that has corrected my hem. And that ruler that I recommended that you guys buy in my Sewing 101 video, yeah, that's also really going to come in handy. Because now I can use the length of the ruler to match up with your grain on your pattern piece. And you might be asking yourself, why is this important? Well, the advantage of using a cloth mask is that they are reusable, meaning that you're going to be washing them regularly so if it hasn't been cut on the grain what you're going to be left with is a mask that actually starts to warp and no longer fits correctly so i don't think i really need to explain how that's not good but yeah that's not good especially if you have limited resources and can't afford to make more of these the reason that i'm going right into the middle of the fabric is because if you actually look at this seam which is the side seam you'll notice how the stripes actually merge into each other in a v pattern because your side seam isn't necessarily straight at least not with the grain therefore try to cut your pattern pieces out of the middle of your leg and of course we all wear different sizes so if you need to monopolize on the amount of fabric that you have you can try not fully dissecting your clothes and leaving some of the seam allowance in your garment or you can steal i mean borrow some clothes from your boyfriend so you can possibly have more fabric to work with than you would otherwise. And while I don't actually recommend using jeans because this is very heavy and again, not the most breathable, I also understand you gotta use what you got. And jeans are sewn a little bit differently, so I'm showing you guys how to rip open your seams. And again, I'm using some tips that I've given you guys in my Sewing 101 video, so I will link that up in the cards if you need it as a reference. So I'm first releasing the top stitch that's on the outside of the fabric. And when I get to the end, I'm also going to release some of the stitches that are holding the hem in so that I can actually get through the entire seam. And this technique is going to leave you with a long thread. So I also recommend these snipping shears, something I also failed to show you guys in the Sewing 101 video because I couldn't find it. So now when I open that top stitch, you'll see that my seam allowance is actually on the right side of my fabric instead of on the wrong side. So I'm just going to unfold it, open up my seam. Now holding the fabric with a little tension, I'm now going to open up the seam entirely, separating our two pieces. So now let's take a closer look at the pattern piece. And the most important things that you want to pay attention to are the grain, like I mentioned before and also how many pieces you should be cutting. It tells you what your seam allowance is, which is one centimeter or three eighths of an inch, and it gives you a series of notches. So one thing that can make the cutting process a lot faster is folding your symmetrical patterns in half and laying the grain on the fold. So I cut the two main pattern pieces out of what will be my outer mask fabric, and then the remaining two out of the fabric that will be my lining. However, do keep in mind that you have to cut your chin panel twice. But you still have one last step before you remove your pins from your pattern piece and that is marking your notches and for me i just like to cut into them so you want to snip not all the way into your seam allowance but just enough that you can see it's there so now this is what you should be looking at 
your chin panel, your nose piece, and your gussets for your lining, and then your chin panel and your mask in your outer fabric. And now we're ready to put everything together. So this is what I recommend having on your table other than your sewing machine. So I'm first starting off with the outer mask and we're going to sew in this dart which is going to make room for our nose. And once done, you want to press the seam open, which means that you just lay the seam allowance on each side and iron it flat. Then with the right side of our fabric facing us, meaning the side that doesn't have the seam allowance, we're going to attach the chin panel. So something that you will always see me do is first align the grain, which is the center of the mask. Then I align the outer notches and everything in between. And because I was losing light this day, you guys can now see that I've moved on to a different piece of fabric. Because while I did finish the previous mask, I noticed that it actually didn't fit to my liking. And this is why. If there's anything that we've learned over the last couple weeks, it's that whatever mask you choose to wear, for it to be the most effective, it should be snug. Therefore, if there are any open entry points, then particles can get through. So because of the shape of my face, the chin panel wasn't fitting me at all. So I made an adjustment to the pattern by basically just adding a dart like we did at the nose bridge. Snip it like I did before and press the seam open, then attach it to the rest of the mask. I always recommend first aligning your center or your grain and then everything else to a fit. And at first, this is going to look like it doesn't fit. However, as you guys can see, all you have to do is gently cup the fabric in your fingers and pinch together. So now this is what my chin panel is looking like. And if I were to flip it to the right side, it would look like this. So now I have my very pointy chin panel, and if you guys look on the inside, you'll see that that curve has created an excess or bunching of fabric. So to alleviate that a bit, what we're going to do is snip into our fabric by creating little triangles. And a cheat that I do is just folding the fabric in half and snipping on an angle to create that little dart or V-shape, which will end up looking a little something like this. Now the construction of the outer mask is completely finished and we can move on to the lining. And this consists of three pieces, which essentially are going to fit together like so. On the pattern piece, it's already instructed us to fold over our one centimeter seam allowance and do a top stitch. So that's what I'm doing to all of the pieces, making sure that I have mirrored those two side gussets. So double check that you don't fold both sides in the same direction. So now after top stitching, I'm going to align my raw edges like so. And to make this easier to see, I'm showing it to you on the pattern piece itself. So I've folded the paper back and now it's telling us to overlap those seams between the arrows. So if I layer them together, you'll see that this is essentially what your fabric should look like. So you're literally just overlapping the seam and then you want to do a short horizontal stitch along the top and bottom. So this is the wrong side of my fabric. This is the right side. And these gussets are the openings for where your filter would go. Sew in the dart just like we did on the outer fabric. So just like before, the only thing left to do is to sew on the chin panel. And as you guys can see, I've just chosen to line it with the outer fabric rather than the lining fabric. So now what we have to do is actually put the lining and the outer shell together. So with right sides facing together, meaning the sides that don't have any exposed seams, we're going to sandwich together. And like always, I'm starting at the center grain. So I'm going to align the nose darts first, pin the seam allowance flat, and then I work my way out, aligning all of the notches that we've indicated on our fabric. and the top seam is done. 
So now we're just going to flip it to the bottom. And here I'm just showing you guys why I don't pin both sides and sew at the same time. It's so that I don't accidentally bump into the opposite row of pins while I'm working. So try to just pin one side at a time. So once we're done, our mask is going to look something like this. And now we want to turn it inside out. So to do that, I just reach into one of my side gussets and pull it through like so. But now we're just left with this blob which looks kind of shapeless and like we didn't put much work into it. So to define the shape, what you now want to do is lay your seams flat. And this is going to be much easier if you actually press your seams open before you turn it inside out. So now we're going to top stitch. So I've done that positioning the edge of my mask about an eighth of an inch away from my needle. So you want to repeat that along the bottom, which means that now the only unfinished edge are the sides. But instead of just clipping this away, I actually have a stitch on my machine which can help with fraying. So I use that to finish the edges since I don't have a serger. Which leaves us with something like this and we are now so close to being done. All we have to do is attach our elastic by folding over our sides. And because there is a shortage of elastic pretty much everywhere, what you can do is just go to your local drugstore and buy elastic hair bands, which vary in a ton of sizes. So I opted to go for these, which are already in my stash, but unfortunately they don't have the most give. So do make sure that you test them out before actually putting them into your mask. And because these were on the thick side, which was less than ideal, what I did is I used my zipper foot in order to sew right against them. So my final thoughts, besides the fact that I should have used a more forgiving elastic, it is causing the sides of my mask to buckle a little bit. However, it is still very form fitted to my face. And the only thing that would make this fit perfectly is if I had some wire to insert around my nose. So if you plan to sew any of these to donate to local hospitals, then this would ensure that they actually pass the breathing test. But other than that, they fit my jaw perfectly. And I made versions of them with ties instead of elastics so that not only would I not be putting pressure on my ears, but also on my new piercings, which some of you may remember I got a couple months ago. So that may or may not be helpful to you guys who also have cartilage piercings because they can take up to a year to fully heal. So just to show you guys the difference, this is the original pattern. As you can see, the chin panel sits perfectly fine if your profile is a little bit flatter. But if your shape cups in a little bit more like so, that's when the chin panel gets flat. So to customize yours, all you have to do is pinch in the excess fabric and that will create your dart. So if you want to attempt it, again, the pattern is in the description box below and it is 100% free. But if you guys do want some more options or maybe hand sewing or a more simple pattern, just let me know in the comments and I'll see what I can come up with. So with that, I hope that everyone is doing as well as they can, that you're staying home and that you're only going outside when absolutely necessary. Stay safe and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.